Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about planes and uh, lines um, in the course of solid geometry. Um, I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website unizor.com, um, not from the YouTube channel or anywhere else, because uh, the website contains very um, detailed notes for each lecture, so uh, it would be better if you just read the notes before or after the lecture. Uh, now, the previous lecture was about two lines and a plane, and I was talking about when they are perpendicular, parallel, etc. Now, this lecture is basically like a mirror image of the previous one, because now I have two planes and a line. And again, it will be very similar theorems. Um, the same three theorems as before uh, in the previous lecture, but instead of planes, there will be lines, and instead of lines, there will be planes. So, okay, here they are. Um, by the way, in the previous lecture, the first theorem was if you have two parallel lines and one of them is perpendicular to a plane, then another one will also be perpendicular to a plane. Now here, the first theorem is very similar, but as I said, planes are lines and lines are planes. So let's assume that you have one line and you have two planes parallel to each other. Something like this. So this is one line and two planes, gamma and delta. So gamma and delta are, are parallel planes, which means they do not have any common um, points, no intersection. And also I know that the line is perpendicular to one of them. I have to prove that it's perpendicular to another one as well. Okay, so this line intersects uh, gamma, playing gamma at point uh, P, and let's say it intersects the line delta at point Q. Um, okay, the question is does point Q exist? So, if my line intersects one of two parallel planes, it must intersect another one. Well, um, how can we address this issue? Um, hmm, let's just think about it. If it's not, then if there is no Q, if there is no intersection, then this line is parallel. Hmm, how can that be? Well, let's just leave it alone. Um, let's just assume that there is such a point Q. Um, actually, uh, I think it would, be it would be a very good exercise if you think about how to prove that the intersection actually exists. So let's assume it exists. So what we will do next is we will create a plane through the line A and the plane, since it completely contains um, line A, it must contain points P, P and Q on it, so it will intersect, so this would be my plane, and it will intersect this and this. So this plane, let's call it, I don't know how, alpha. Uh, it intersects Q, it intersects uh, gamma um, at some P, P star, and it intersects delta at Q, Q prime. P, pr P, P prime and Q, Q prime, prime. Now, these lines are supposed to be parallel because we already um, discuss this theorem when we were talking about parallel planes. So if you have two parallel planes 
and uh, these parallel planes are intersected by the third plane, then the lines of intersection must be parallel to each other. Well, actually, this is a simple thing to prove. I mean, if you um, think about this, these lines are lying in the same plane, alpha. They must not have common points, obviously, because if they do, then the planes would intersect, and they are um, supposedly parallel. All right, so fine. So P, P prime and Q, Q prime are parallel to each other. P, P prime is parallel to Q, Q prime. But P, P prime is perpendicular to the, to, 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 to the line A, because A is perpendicular to an to, to entire plane. Now, if you have a line, and you have one perpendicular to the line, and another line which is parallel to the first one, and everything is going on within the uh, plane alpha, uh, uh, alpha, so this is the plane geometry. So obviously if you have a line, one is perpendicular, and another line which is parallel to this one, it also is perpendicular from the course of the plane geometry. So that means that Q, Q prime is perpendicular to our line A. Now, we will do exactly the same with another plane. Let's try another plane. And we will have another intersection, P double prime. and Q, Q second. Um, absolutely the same logic, it's just different plane, let's call it beta for instance, and from this we see that Q, Q uh, second, double prime, whatever, is also perpendicular to A. So, consequently, we have a line which is perpendicular to two um, lines on, on the plane and that is a sufficient condition for the line to be perpendicular to the entire plane as we have proven before. Okay? All right. Um, okay. So let's go to the next. Yes, we still have this hanging issue with the uh, um, intersection of the line A with the plane delta. Um, if you, if, if anybody, by the way, if anybody comes up with some kind of a very nice and concise proof of this, uh, send it to me and I'll just put it on the website. And meanwhile, I'll think about this myself and I'll put it into notes for this lecture. If it's already not there, I don't remember actually. Anyway, number two. Again, it's in a way similar to the previous lecture, the theorem number two, but instead of lines we have planes and instead of planes we have lines. Now in this case, I have one line and I have two planes which are perpendicular to the same line. I have to prove that the planes are parallel. Okay, so how can we prove that the planes are parallel. Well, in this case, uh, we will do the following. Let's assume they are not parallel, which means there is common point. There is an intersection and there is a common point. So let's say these planes somehow are intersecting somewhere. And there is a point somewhere 
where they intersect. Well, actually, planes intersect um, along the entire line, but I don't really need the line, I need just one point of intersection. What I do next is, using this point of intersection M, I will draw a plane based on the line and uh, and the point of intersection M. Now, this line, th this plane will intersect gamma somehow, and it will intersect inter intersect delta somehow. So the plane which includes line A and point M should have certain intersections with both alpha, uh, gamma, and and delta. Now, since I was saying from the very beginning that A is perpendicular to gamma and A is perpendicular to delta, it means that A is perpendicular to PM and A is perpendicular to QM. So within this plane, which is based on the line in M, I have two perpendiculars to the same line A from the point M, which in the plane geometry is impossible. Right? We have a line, we have a point, we can have only one perpendicular, we don't have two different perpendiculars. Which means that our uh, assumption about the intersection of these two planes is just wrong. They do not intersect, which means they are parallel. Okay, and the third theorem is if you have a line and a point outside which is not on this line and you know that there is a plane this point belongs to which is perpendicular to A. Now let's say we have a completely different plane which also originates, well, it, it, it contains the point M, different from the, from the gamma. So there is another plane, whatever the plane actually is, something like this, call it delta. So delta is also a plane which contains point M. So my point is that is, if, if this is a different plane from the gamma, then this plane cannot be parallel to gamma and it cannot be perpendicular to the line. So again, gamma is containing the point M and is perpendicular to A. Delta is a different plane which also contains point M. So this new plane delta cannot be parallel to gamma and cannot be perpendicular to um, A. Well, it's actually a trivial theorem, quite frankly. Well, number one, it's obviously not parallel to gamma because uh, uh, gamma and delta have a common point, right? They intersect, so nothing to talk about. There is no parallelism at all. How about perpendicularity? Well, um, let's just think about if delta is perpendicular to A, and we know that if two planes, two different planes, are perpendicular to the same line, they must be parallel. But we have just proven that, it's not, that, that there is no per parallelism among these two planes. So it cannot be perpendicular to A either. That's basically it. Now, what's important um, right now is not that these are, well, difficult or anything like this theorem. They're not difficult at all. 
actually they're trivial, uh, tri trivial and everything follows from definitions and probably one or two theorems which we have already proven. What is, however, important from an educational standpoint is for you to basically repeat these proofs and preferably not even to, to yourself, but on the, on the paper. If you write these, these proofs, that would be even much better. It, you, you, you will learn it better, actually. Because when you are writing something and you are trying to prove your point, it actually a, a tremendous help in, in, in development of your analytical thinking, your logic, etc. So I strongly recommend to do just that. Uh, you can listen to lecture, you can read the notes, but then put everything aside, have a piece of paper and try to prove these simple theorems just by yourself and that would be the great help for you. That's it. Thanks very much and good luck.